This is Greater Team Model Academic Enhancement School GMAX 41. You are welcome to our Fluid Mechanics class. In this video, we are going to talk about Fluid Dynamics, another branch of Fluid Mechanics. You would recall that Fluid Dynamics is the branch of Fluid Mechanics that studies the properties and behaviors of fluid in motion, that's fluid flow in motion, and then it gives attention to the force producing the motion. We also have kinematics, you would remember, that also talk about fluid in motion, but does not consider the force causing the motion. Now, in discussing our fluid dynamics, it's very important for us to know that this has a bearing with Newton's second law of motion. Because whenever you talk about motion, it's very important that you apply the Newton's second law of motion concepts that states that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force applied. Having said that, in analyzing a fluid under fluid dynamics, we make an assumption that the fluid has to be incompressible and non-viscous. When we say that a fluid is incompressible, it means that uh, the fluid does not uh, compress. Okay? In such a case, we assume the density to be constant. We assume the density to be constant, and of course that applies to liquid. Is that okay? Remember, compressible flow, or compressible fluid rather, applies to gases. Why incompressible is used for liquid analysis. In fluid make, there are three major equations that we encounter and we work with that as we study the course. One of them is the continuity equation, the other is energy equation, of course we have the impulse momentum equation. We are going to focus on continuity equation and energy equation more. When we talk about the continuity equation, what is our focus? We, we, we try to analyze what we call the flow rates. There are two major flow rates of concern to us, the mass flow rate and the volume flow rate of a fluid. When I tell about the mass flow rate, it's simply the mass of fluid flowing through a given section of either a pipe, all right, with a given time. So that being the case, we could be saying that a mass flow rate, if I use m uh, dot on top for it, is going to be mass of fluid flowing per unit uh, time. That's the, the base definition of mass flow rate. Now, if we have this as the mass flow rate equation, we can actually work on it to get this rho AV. How possible would that be? We know that our mass all right, is density times what? Volume. So if you replace this with density times volume divided by time, you would work around that equation and get this rho a v. Please, this v here is velocity. v here is volume because it's obtained from mass, which is density times volume. Now how can this equation actually come out from here? If mass is density times volume, and we know that volume is area times length. Volume is area times length, we know that. Which means that this equation now becomes density times area times length divided by time as your mass flow rate. And then length over time, from the knowledge of motion, you know that length over time is what? Your velocity. Okay, it measures velocity dimensionally. Which means that this L over T will now become our V, where that V is velocity, not this V volume. So, you can, you, you can now look at it, if we work on that, we'll be having rho A V with this V being our velocity, and that's how we get our mass flow rate. And of course, for the mass flow rate, it is a constant. Is that okay? The mass of a fluid per unit time entering a given section of the pipe is equal to the mass of the fluid coming out of the other section. Is that okay? It's an assumption we make there. It's constant. And if that is the case, when something is equal to constant, that thing gives you room to write the initial value to be equal to the final value or equal to any value intermediate. And that is why we now have the equation, since rho a v is equal to constant, we can write it as density 1 times area 1 times velocity 1 equal to density 2 times area 2 times velocity 2. And this can continue as equal to, all right, down to density n, area n, velocity n. We are done with the mass flow rate, we want to talk about the volumetric flow rate. Volumetric flow rate is also called throughput. So take care of that in case you hear that, or you can call it discharge. In some cases, we even call it liquid overflow. These are terms used to refer to volumetric flow rate. And by definition, volumetric flow rate is also volume of fluid flowing through a given section per unit time. 
volume of fluid flowing through a given section per unit which means that if we have this as our volumetric flow rate, right, it will be volume over time. If you work around this volume over time equation, you'll get volumetric flow rate to be mass flow rate divided by density. You can just take a look at, at it here. Volume is mass over density. Then mass over time alone now become mass flow rate divided by what? Density. All right, now, we know that mass flow rate is density times area times velocity. So if you substitute density times area times velocity here, the density will cancel the denominator density and you'll be left with area times velocity. Once again, volumetric flow rate is a constant, so we make it equal to constant. And that being the case, we can write it as having initial and final value being equal, just like you have here. In the next video, we are going to talk about the energy equation. So now we want to talk about the energy equation, having considered a continuity equation. The energy equation in field mech is that equation that relates the three major energies that are encountered when you are studying fluid. And these three major energies are the pressure energy, also called the pressure head, and uh, we have the velocity head, okay? And the velocity head goes with kinetic energy. Then we have the potential head, or of course, or potential energy. It goes with uh, height. Height is what describes the potential energy. You can see them on the board here. There's a pressure energy and it is given as P over W. Where this P is our change in pressure or simply pressure. And then this W is our specific weight. And you know that this specific weight is also equal to rho G. It's not as density and solution to gravity. For the velocity head, which defines kinetic energy as well too, we have it as V squared over 2G. Is that okay? And then a potential head or energy is equal to Z. Remember, you, 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 you see nothing like mass here. There is no mass here. The reason is because when there is flow from one section to another section of, say, a pipe, the inlet mass and the outlet mass are equal. That's why we say that mass flow rate is constant in the previous video. Is that okay? And for that reason, we have no mass there because the mass on both ends, all right, the inlet and the exit, will cancel out of the equation. The potential head or energy is Z. We used to know potential energy to be mgz. Uh, uh, you can use mgh as well to z there representing the height. You know that mass is constant, so it goes off the equation. This g here, why it is not multiplying this z is because of its appearance in the velocity head. Normally, the velocity is meant to be v squared over 2 if this g is to be multiplied by this z. Is that okay? All the same is still equal, okay? It's, it's still the same thing. If you don't put g here, as it is, so you can use it to multiply this z. Uh, but we'll have this as a standard form of the equation anyway, so you have to learn it in that format. Now, from these three energy uh, equations, these three uh, terms of energy, we could talk about the total head, also known as the total energy. Uh, the total head here is equal to P over W plus V squared over 2G plus Z, just to add this, okay? We call this head okay, because the unit is expressed in meters of liquid. You could remember our static head where we stated that in that case pressure can be expressed in meters of water. So the same idea we use here. Then if you're talking about total energy, the equation is still the same. The difference is just the unit. You can see the unit here is joule per kilogram, that is Newton meter per kilogram. Alright? In the next video, we're going to solve a question applying this uh, formula. Now we have this example on the board. And the question says, in a pipe of 90 millimeter diameter. Water is flowing with a mean velocity of 2 meters per second and at a gauge pressure of 350 kilonewton per square meter. Determine the total head if the pipe is 8 meters above the dotting line. Neglect friction. Alright, so in this question we have to calculate what? The total head. And you recall that we already established that the total head H is equal to the sum of the three heads expressed in the unit of what meters. Now the three heads we're talking about are the pressure head which is given as pressure divided by specific weight plus the kinetic head otherwise known as the velocity head given as v squared over 2g and of course we have to add the potential head which is defined by height z. Now our total head is not going to be looking at the question we know the gauge pressure was given to be 350 so we're going to write 350 Take note that this is in kilonewton per square meter. Kilonewton per square meter. So we may choose to do some form of conversion if you want, but if we don't want to convert, since this denominator can also be expressed in kilo value, then 
we can actually leave that as 9.81. Remember, that is a specific weight of water. This is in kilonewton per cubic meter. So kilo kilo, they will take care of each other. Then plus the velocity given from here is 2. We divide it, this is 2 squared now, okay? So we're going to divide it by 2 times 9.81, which is acceleration due to gravity. Please take note, this 9.81 is not the same as this 9.81. It happens to be coincidence, is that okay? This is specific weight of water, which is 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter. And then this 9.81 is acceleration due to gravity value used for fluid analysis. We're going to add it to the height which is 8 meters above the datum line. When you hear a datum line, it means a line of equal pressure. Is that okay? So we're going to add it to 8, and uh, we will evaluate this. Mm? Let's, uh, let me use uh, this calculator. Okay, this is my calculator. Mm -hmm. So we're going to evaluate that and see the value that we're going to get. If you punch your 350 divided by 9.81, then add it to 4 divided by open brackets 2 times 9.81, and then add it to 8, it's giving us 43.88, then the unit is meters. So this is the total head, is that okay, for this problem. A very important equation in fluid dynamics is the Bernoulli's equation. The Bernoulli's equation is used to analyze the fact that the sum of all the energies is a constant. That is, if you add the pressure energy, add the kinetic energy, add the potential energy, it should give you a constant. What does the Bernoulli's equation state? Let's look at the statement we brought here, very practical for us to be aware of it. It states that in an ideal incompressible field, when the flow is steady and continuous, the sum of the pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy is constant along a string line. There are key words that are important for us to take note of in this statement. One of it is that the fluid has to be what? Ideal and what? Incompressible fluid. Also, the flow should be what? Steady and uh, continuous. Is that okay? And that uh, the flow should also be along a string line. These points are very important when stating Bernoulli's uh, equation. Now, when we talk about the sum of all these energies being equal to a constant, you can see it as derived here. Are you getting me? I hope you see that this is initial sum of energy equal to what? Final sum of energy. In fact, we can say that this is E1 equal to E2, much like inlet energy equal to what? Outlet energy. Suppose you are considering, let's say, a pipe. Is that okay? A pipe. So that here is inlet, inlet, and then we have here as what outlet. Is that clear? So the inlet energy equal to outlet energy. And of course, you know when you have in equal to out or initial equal to final, it means that that term is a constant. In deriving Bernoulli's equation, we can rely on the Euler's equation of fluid flow. We can rely on the Euler's equation of fluid uh, flow. And the Euler's equ equation of fluid flow is actually a differential equation which is given by this. Okay, this is the Euler's equation. You should know it. Okay, this is dp all over density plus v dv plus g dz equal to zero. Now to obtain the Bernoulli's equation from here, all we have to do is to integrate. You would recall in one of our previous videos that it was stated that if you have a differential coefficient multiplying a quantity, if you want to get the result of that quantity, what do you do? You have to integrate. If you look at in this case, dp is a multiplier of 1 over density. 1 over density is multiplied by dp, a is the same as this, and then v is multiplied by dv, yg is multiplied by dz, everything being equal to 0. So we can actually integrate this with initial to final limits, all right, of the terms. You have in each of the three terms here. Density is a constant, so we'll bring it out one all over density. Why is density a constant in this Euler's equation? Remember that the fluid is an ideal incompressible fluid. An incompressible fluid is one that has a constant density. Why compressible fluid has a variable density by intent, all right? So if we integrate this from initial to final pressure and then initial to final velocity, initial to final um, um, height, all right, or datum, we would have this result. Remember, integral dp will give us p. Integral v dv. Here, this is v raised power 1. So add 1 to the power v, you get v raised power 2, divide by that 2. 
then integral dz would bring down bring back the z for us so you have this then put your limit p1 to p2 the same thing you have v1 to v2 the same thing here z1 to z2 if you do that you get something like this p2 minus p1 that is upper minus lower limit divided by the density this will give us v2 squared minus v1 squared everything divided by 2 and then this will be z2 minus z1 times your g equal to zero. You can see in this case the potential energy term is multiplied by z is an answer, which is what I said in, in, in one of the previous uh, videos. So working around this equation, if you work around it, you're going to get what did I do at this point? I had to divide through my this g. So I have to remove the g from the height term. Is that okay? That was how we actually introduced g to the denominator of the kinetic energy term. So we're going to have this, and you know that rho g is specific weight, w. So if you split this equation into two, you can see this, the initial and the final, then possibly take the final to the other part, or take the initial to the other part, is your choice. If you do that, you're going to get this equation. So this is Bernoulli's equation. And one can simply say that Bernoulli's equation is still the same as p over w plus v squared over 2g plus z equal to zero or equal to constant, is that okay? Where this P is a change in pressure, gauge pressure, V is also a change in velocity, Z is also a change in, uh, in, uh, in, in zero, that is in height, just like we saw in this uh, equation. So, take note of this equation, it's important, you should know the statement of Bernoulli's uh, um, equation, know your Euler's equation, then know uh, the Bernoulli's equation, which of course I said is the same as E1 equal to what? E2. In obtaining the Bernoulli's equation, certain assumptions were made. We have about five of them on the board here, and we want to look at them. What are the assumptions? You could remember in Bernoulli's statement, we could see some of the assumptions from that law, uh, that uh, statement, and uh, what did he say? One of them is that the liquid under consideration there should be ideal and what? Incompressible. Then number two, the flow should be steady and continuous. The concept of steady flow and continuous flow, even streamlined flow, we're going to discuss that, all right, or in kinematics in a moment from now. Then, number three, the flow should be along a straight line that is one dimensional flow. You know, we have two dimensional flow that is plane and then three dimensional flow in space, so you consider x, y, z, and that. But in talking about Bernoulli's equation, it must be a one dimensional flow system that is a streamlined. Then the velocity is uniform over the section and equal to the mean velocity. From the study of thermochemistry, uh, we talk about uh, mean velocity and equal to the square root of uh, RT divided by pi m, where R is the universal gas constant, T is the absolute temperature, and of course our m is the molecular weight of the fluid that we are talking about if it is a gas. Now, the fifth assumption is that the force is acting on the fluid element are the forces of gravity and the pressure forces only. So these were the assumptions made in deriving Bernoulli's uh, equation. It is now time we're going to look at calculations and continuity equation. Remember that Bernoulli's equation is also a form of continuity equation in energy form. So we're going to recall flow rate equation as well too and see how this relates. Now we have our first example on the board. We're going to apply the continuity equation to solve this problem, which reads the diameters of a pipe at section 11 and 22 are 200 millimeter and 300 millimeter respectively. If the velocity of water flowing through the pipe at section 11 is 4 meters per second, find I discharge through the pipe. I add velocity of water at section 22. All right, in solving this problem, try to bring out the data, okay, that's the information given to us from the question. We know the inlet diameter and the outlet diameter. Talking about section 1, 1, and 2, it's just like the inlet and outlet of a pipe. Is that okay? Just imagine that this is a pipe and then you have your fluid entering from here and coming out from here, all right? Now, the diameters of the inlet and outlet are not the same. You can see that the inlet has a, less, a lesser diameter than the outlet, okay? This is 0.2 meters, that is converting from millimeter, and this is 0.3 meters, converting from millimeter to meter. Of course, in order to do that already, you divide the millimeter value by 1,000. All right, we were given the inlet velocity that is at section 1, 1. Here, it says that the, uh, the velocity of the um, okay, velocity of water flowing through the pipe at section one one is four meters. 
per second. So we have it here. We don't know our discharge Q, that is volumetric flow rate or throughput. We don't know our outlet velocity, okay? So it's unknown. How do we handle this? Remember, on the continuity equation, we established that the volumetric flow rate is equal to a constant. Even mass flow rate is equal to a constant, which gives you room to write that the volumetric flow rate is equal to AV. We know that that's area times velocity. So you can write area 1 times velocity 1 equal to area 2 times velocity 2 equal to area 3 times velocity 3 in that order. It simply means that the discharge is equal to any one of that section. All right? That's any one of the area times velocity of a given section. Now, looking at this question, we know we can calculate area 1 because we know the diameter of uh, the inlet and we can also calculate area of the outlet because we know the diameter of the outlet. We are given velocity 1, that is velocity at the inlet. And you know that your, your discharge is area times velocity. So we can use the inlet area times inlet velocity to calculate our what? Discharge. Is that okay? We can't use the outlet part here because we don't know the velocity. Now, the first part of the question, this charge equal to A V, we know that that means it's equal to A1, V1, equal to A2, V2. So whichever you know all of the terms, you use your calculate. Now I know all the terms in A1, V1, that is the inlet, section 1, 1. All I have to do is to calculate my area using the diameter of the inlet. We know area to be pi D squared over what? 4. So area 1 will be pi D1 squared over 4. Substitute the values, you have it here, D1 is 0.2, look at it, meters, so we're going to square it here, multiply by pi and divide by 4, that's going to give us 0 0.0314 meter square. Now, having obtained the area of the inlet, then our discharge will now be equal to area 1 times velocity 1. Area 1 is 0 0.0314, look at it, times the inlet velocity V1, which of course is 4 meter per second. Punch that in your calculator, you're going to have 0 0.126 meter cube per second. Remember, this is the unit of volumetric flow rate because it is volume over time. So you have meter cube per second. Then quickly, we can obtain the outlet velocity which we're asked to calculate. Since we know the volumetric flow rate, now that is discharge, we can calculate area 2 because we know diameter 2. So we can use this formula to calculate velocity 2. Making V2 subject formula to be the discharge divided by area 2. Quickly obtain area 2 pi d2 squared over 4, where our d2 is what? Okay, 0.3 meters, look at it. So d2, so you substitute it and square it, divide by 4, you get your area 2 to be 0.071 meters squared. So we can now substitute for the discharge and area 2 in this equation to calculate v2. And if you do that, I have v2 equal to 0 0.126, which is a volumetric flow rate of discharge. Divided by what? Your A2, which is 0 0.071. Evaluating that, we get our outlet velocity at section 2 to be 1.8 meter per second, approximately. Alright, let us look at this example number 3 here. The question says that the pipeline is 15 centimeter in diameter and it has an elevation of 100 meter at section A. At section B, it is at an elevation of 107 meters and has diameter of 30 centimeters. When a discharge of 50 liters per second of water passed through the pipeline, right, through pipeline, pressure at A is 35 kilopascal. The energy loss in pipe is two meter of water. Calculate pressure at B if flow is from A to B. Now, if you look at this problem given to us, we have a pipeline. The pipeline has diameter of 15 at section A and diameter of 30 at section B. At section A, it is at an elevation. Elevation means a height, okay? So we're going to draw a line of equal pressure, which we refer to as a datum line. Then at section A, there is an elevation of 100 meter, while at section B, there is an elevation of 107 meters, which means that section B is higher than section A. We're giving the pressure at section A, and then we're giving the discharge 15 liters per second. You have to convert this from liters to meter cube, which is the SI unit of volume. Now, we have this diagram here. Assuming this to be the pipeline, this is the inner section A. You can see, you can see a line drawn here. I'm taking it as a line of equal pressure, that's the datum line. Then section A has an elevation of 100 meters above that datum line. Now, when you go ahead, of course, since section B is higher than section A, B means that the pipe will tip upward like this, okay? to rise up, and then we go this way, we take this as 
section B at an elevation of 107 meters. The respective diameters are given to us in the question, 15 centimeters for section A, which is equivalent to 0.15 meters, because to convert from centimeters to meter, you divide the centimeter by 100. Remember that. Then the ones we've been seeing in previous example is from millimeter to meters, so you divide that by 1,000. So in this case, it's centimeters to meters, so we divide the centimeter by 100. 15 cm is 0.15 meters, and then coming here, 30 cm at section B will be equal to 0.3 meters. Looking at the data given to us, there is a loss, all right, of 2 meters. That's energy loss of 2 meters. Since the flow is from A to B, it means that this will be added to section B because the flow is from A to B. If the flow is from B to A, you will add this energy loss to section A. Is that okay? All right, if you look at this data presented to us, it's very clear that this problem is going to be handled or approached using Bernoulli's equation. Because we know the inlet condition and the energies, all right, we have pressure, we have diameter. From diameter, we'll calculate area, and from the area, we will use the discharge formula. Recall that, right, from continuity equation, Q is equal to AV. We will now use that equation to calculate velocity. So indirectly, velocity is given to us here, is that okay? Once you know diameter, you've known area, and if you know throughput, that is discharge, it means you can calculate velocity there. The same thing happens in section B. So this problem is actually a Bernoulli's equation. Not to forget, remember we have height here, we have height here, where we talk about the potential head or potential energy. Now we have the discharge value there, 50 liters per second. To convert from liter to meter cube, you divide the liters by 1,000. So if you divide 50 by 1,000, you're going to have 0 0.05 meter cube per second. I wrote out the Bernoulli's equation, all right? These are the inlet energy. You can see them, sum of all inlet energy equal to the sum of all outlet energy added to the energy loss since the flow is from A to B. You want to take note of this. This problem could have asked you to calculate the inlet energy. If it asks you to calculate the inlet energy, all you need to do is to use this part, okay? Why this part is for outlet uh, energy. In fact, this is outlet, while this is inlet. You could see clearly, CCHF is away, then it means that we can say that E1, that is E in, is equal to E2 plus the energy loss, as the case might be. Which means the energy loss can still give us E1 minus E2. Because hmm? these are possible things you might be asked to find. What is the energy loss, you know, as the case might be? It will give you all the inlet data and outlet data. So you calculate the inlet energy, outlet energy, you use this to get the energy loss. Is that okay? Anyway, let's focus on what this question is about. Having converted this to meter cube per second and having written the Bernoulli's equation plus the energy loss at section B, since fluids is to section B, we now want to see, look at what we know from this formula and what we don't know. Okay? We know pressure at A. Pressure at A is 35 kilopascal. It is given from the question. We have it here. Is that okay? So it's given the uh, view we know it, a specific uh, weight, which is 9.81. All right, now we don't know our velocity, both at section A and at section B, but because we were given diameter, we have to calculate the area, and then using the discharge, now find the velocity. Of course, you can see it here. Hmm? You can see it there. Now, for the velocity A, we're going to say this discharge divided by area A, area of section A. We know the diameter already, so we're fixing the value pi d squared over 2 over 4 rather. Remember that is the formula for area given diameter. Is that okay? <laughs> when dealing with flip back assistant, you have to forget about that formula of pi r squared. It works also if you divide this diameter by 2. You can use pi r squared because diameter over 2 gives you radius, which is pi r squared to be used. But you don't bother yourself. Engineers calculate with diameter. Is that okay? Because of the instruments, usually they use measuring or personal venue caliper, micrometer screw, they measure diameter. Is that okay? Okay, back to our problem. Um, so with these, you can get velocity at the inlet and then do similar thing to velocity at section B using our discharge divided by area B. Area B is pi d squared over 4. The diameter of section B is 0 0.3 meters because it was given as 30 centimeters from the question. Evaluate this, you're going to get 0 0.707 meter per second. V is 2.829 meter per second. Now, our problem is to calculate the pressure at B. We don't know the pressure at B. That's our problem. So all we need to do is to come to this equation of Bernoulli and then make pressure at B subject of the formula. I chose to make PB over W subject of the formula first, which means that all these terms from velocity down to our HF will be taken to the left-hand side. And when you're going to the left-hand side, you're going to be subtracted from the terms here. Is that not so? 
which means if I make PB over W standalone, you can see that PB over W standing alone is going to be PA over W, you we'll look at it, then plus VA squared all over 2G minus VB squared all over 2G, because this plus VB squared over 2G is crossing, it's become minus there. Since this is velocity term, velocity term, you can put them together, they have the same denominator. So if VB squared, squared go there and become negative, what you're going to have is VA squared minus VB squared, then their common denominator. Then ZB crosses is now become ZA minus ZB. HF crosses is become minus HF. Now we're going to substitute for all these things here. Okay. Now this is going to give us PB divided by specific weight. Specific weight is 9.81 in kilonewton per cubic meter, converting from kilo to normal units. Is that okay? We are going to multiply this by 1,000, which is what I did here to get the specific weight of this problem to be. 9810, taking it to be water flowing through this pan. Then you come to this pressure at A was given the rest to be 35 kilopascal. Alright, you could see the reason why I multiplied 9.81 uh, specifically with 1000. So as to convert this one also, I'm converting it from kilopascal to pascal, that is to Newton per square meter. That is why I divided by I multiplied by 1000, then divided by specific with 9810. The reason why we are converting from kilo value is because the energies you are going to get from the kinetic energy term and the potential energy term, and even the head was given to you in the question, are not in kilo values. Are you getting? They are not in kilo values. They are in SI unit. Like this energy, if you calculate it, it will be in joules. This one also. Is that clear? And so, having said that, we are now going to proceed. Add it to ZE minus ZB, which is 100 minus 107. It's coming here, substitute for the velocity term, the potential term, that is the height, then minus 2 meters, which is the head mass. You can get a calculator now and punch each of these, okay? Work on them. You will get these values for this, this, for this, minus 7 for 100 minus 107, then the minus 2. Add this term to this one, subtract my, uh, 7 from it, subtract 2 for it, from it, you are going to get minus 5.0498. That's what you will get. Which means that we'll be getting like PB over 9810 to be equal to minus 5.0498. Then uh, remember what we're saying is PB over 9810 will now be equal to minus 5.0498. Da, 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 0, 4, uh, 9, 8. Then to make PB stand alone, because that is what you are calculating, you multiply, cross multiply this 9810, you multiply minus 5.0498. That's what I have here. If you do so, you're going to get minus 49,538.5 newton per square meter as a pressure at uh, point B. Now you can convert this into kilonewton per square meter. If your options are given in kilo value. All you have to do is to divide this result you got by 1000, which of course gives us minus 49.54 approximately in kilonewton per square meter. Now, we obtain negative. What does that tell us? You would recall that we said that a, a negative pressure is a negative gauge pressure, which is what? A vacuum pressure. Now, pressure at A is 35 kilopascal positive, which means that pressure at A is, a, is gauge pressure because it's positive. Why pressure at BB obtained to be minus 49.54 kilo newton per square meter is a vacuum pressure. 